Hey everybody, welcome to the Playing With Power podcast, the issue-by-issue retrospective on Nintendo Power magazine. The unofficial one that is full of maturity and immaturity and totally not official. (laughs) Thank you for joining Uh, us. Especially Uh, if you're Nintendo legal. (laughs) Yes, we are looking at uh, volume 79 from December of 1995. I am your host, Ben. With me as always is my co-host, Mike. Hey, and John. Uh, yeah, for the last time. Yeah, why don't you tell us about your uh, big announcement? Well, this is au revoir, my friends. It's been a, it's been a journey. John is uh, stepping down as a full time host going forward. Uh, he'll be hopefully be a guest on a couple uh, episodes a, a season, but uh, he's he's turning in his his, uh, his security badge. Right. Uh, I- I have to go to Power Corp and. <laughs> Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. <laughs> Tongue grabs you by I want the best direction where to go. <laughs> so make the best of this. I'm gonna put that on a loop so when they find me hanging like carrying style in my uh, closet. <laughs> That song's just playing. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. And just and just a note saying I did. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's time. You know, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed everything. It, but uh, I'm not go I'm not going for good. But um, I think dialing back is probably the right call. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, we appreciate your presence on here. You've made us filthier and funnier. For it. <laughs> Thank you, good sirs. It's been yes. a journey, and I've enjoyed most of it. No, I, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, it's been fun. I wouldn't trade it for a second. So, all right. Well, I've got an announcement of myself, my own, actually. Um, yeah. On a, a lighter note, I know everyone's probably sad out there, you know, wondering where they're going to get their latest news from Reddit. Um, but um, <laughs> I have a. So we're going to be taking a break after the '95 season here. Uh, as usual, so it'll be a couple, couple, two, three months before you hear from us again. In the meantime, I am starting up my own solo podcast, um, which is called um, Repeat One, and it's going to be a short format podcast uh, that is based on music. So I'll be featuring um, a story behind one song at a time, songs you can play on loop, and the stories behind them. So it's it's more of a serious podcast. It's not uh, humor. It's not really video game related. Although I'll probably feature some some video game tracks at some point. And uh, yeah, that's my own personal little uh, thing I'm gonna get started over the break. So look so, forward to so that. Ben Solo was taken. <laughs> ben. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look. I didn't look to be honest. Ah. Well, mm. good luck with that. And also on a lighter note. Uh, Last time I saw Ben, he's down 35, 40 pounds at this point? What are you at? Uh, 30, well, 37 is this morning, but wavering between wow. 36, 37. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Chandler. So, yes, that, on a lighter note as well. Yeah. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> I've been working to add it. <laughs> you found it. I've yes. lost it and you found it. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's how it works, you know? <laughs> it's, the, it's one of Newton's law. It's the Fig Newton's law. Big news <laughs> law. Nice. Yep. yep. Calories cannot be destroyed. They can only be they can only be converted or transferred. Yep. <laughs> yep. God bless those four hundred pound people everywhere. Uh, All right. The human batteries of kindness. <laughs> There's so much sad though inside. Mm, indeed. <laughs> All right. Why why were they born with the fat receptor gene? <laughs> Let's dig into the issue at hand. We have Donkey Kong Country 2 on the cover here. Diddy's do, do, Conquest. Do, 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 do. Harry Rescue in Kremland. So you've got... Uh, let's see here. Daisy. Is it Dixie? Dixie riding uh, Diddy's shoulders in full... <laughs> you never remember Majesty. her name. Doxy Kong. <laughs> Doxy, the... the the denial of service, Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I was thinking more like the hooker that lives at the hooker that works by the shipyard, but uh, probably oh, his name Doxy. Dixie. 
Uh, ditzy. I don't know. <laughs> they did go there with the, go. the the cartoon three three fingers and a thumb for mm -hmm. the. I don't know. Or is that is that what primates like other than humans are? I don't even know. I've never really looked at a monkey hand. I don't think they they have five fingers. Yep, they're like yeah. us. Yeah, they just do that because <laughs> it's easier. They yeah. went with the Simpsons route. They do. They they have the same amount of fingers as us, just to piss off Christians who don't believe in evolution. <laughs> it is a little odd that the birds' eyes are separated, but the monkey's eyes are like oh one one, one the same. Yeah. He's got those sonic eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Which are like melted egg. Which are like egg whites. I don't like. I don't mind either. Look, just be consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like I know. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> The problem is that the birds need, need, need to look on either side of them, whereas the <laughs> monkeys don't have to. Yeah, but the eyes almost touch, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> I know, they might as well be cyclops. If they were having the, like, the people pointing like true side like most birds do. Mm -hmm. It's I'd... kind of disturbing when you consider one eyeball with two pupils. It really yeah. is. Like, how do they, how do they wink? <laughs> <laughs> they go temporarily blind for a split second. <laughs> they can second. only blink. I don't understand. Yeah, how does that work? I don't know. Just imagine that there's no innuendo in their language because no one can wink. Mm -hmm. Everything's a staring contest. That's how you know. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. They're also going in depth. Water World, WWF, WrestleMania, the arcade game, Secret of Evermore, Part Deuce, Big VB Royal Land. Wireland for Virtual Boy. And then first look at the new 64 controller and more. And why they didn't quit when they had when they realized it looked like a battering. <laughs> and more. I defy you to find an original one that isn't completely worn out in that middle nub from Mario Party. <laughs> God. This thing's got thrash from Mario Party. <laughs> just just obliterated. People, Usually they like, went limp first. Usually that's right. the first sign. It's like they, they didn't were able to stand up on their own, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you, then you have to buy some controller Viagra. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to like rub your finger up and down the shaft in order to get to, to straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know people don't like the controller, but it did, it never really bothered me that much. It, it you know, because I guess awkward and ugly. Yeah, but functionality-wise, it was okay. I mean, here's I mean how often do you really use the D-pad side of it? So your left hand would be on the joystick, and then your right hand would... But then, like, if the game needed the D-pad, you could go over and... PlayStation pretty much perfected the controller when they had the two sticks. Yeah, well, they didn't invent the analog no, stick. No, I, will, I defy... Uh, the Xbox layout is much better than the PlayStation layout, where, where it's got the offset D-pads. Yeah. The, X, the Xbox D, like, layout is a lot better than the PlayStation. I, well, I wouldn't say, say a lot better, but I will concede that the Xbox One controller is, like, my favorite controller of all time. Right. And this is coming from someone who doesn't even own an Xbox One. <laughs> 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 and yet I own an Xbox One controller. Well, yeah, because it's great for PC games. Maybe. Yeah, okay. exactly. Though, Anyways... The GameCube hmm. controller is not shabby either. Like, I, I'm never a fan of that one. It just felt too small to me. Mm. You, we, what about the original Xbox bread? <laughs> bread <loaf>? The brick. <laughs> oh yeah, the baby. That's that thing. <laughs> yeah, the God. bear cub controller. <laughs> oh man, you could kill a toddler with that thing. <laughs> uh. All right, let's move on in. Inside cover, what I've got in my printed version is I have the, the uh, kid sticking his tongue to a light pole again. So we got yep, the, uh, basically it's a Christmas story. <laughs> yep. All right, we've seen that last time. And then moving. Was this that? was the first time we'd seen this. I saw it last. I ben had it last, last one, time. but we didn't uh, see it. No, you even got like the redheaded kid. I, I know it's tough for you to listen to what Ben says, but, you know, after 80 issues, I figured... You might. Start. We're gonna just trust me, Mike. You can go back and listen to it. We're gonna move forward. Yeah, <laughs> fun. All right. <laughs> yeah, me and John, we don't matter. I. He talked. All right, fine. Let's talk. I mean, what do you want to say about our it? Our listeners have already heard about it, Mike. It's not about you or me. Yeah, it's but we listeners. need Mike. We we need Mike's reaction. What, what do we got, Mike? Uh, well, he looks exactly like Zach Ward, who uh, was the bully in uh, no, Christmas he Story. Doesn't. 
He's red got hair. red hair. The kid. Yeah, Zach Ward has red hair. The bully so, never stuck his tongue to the pole, though. Oh. Okay. The bully stuck Ralphie's no. head to the pole. He like this forced looks him like to do uh, it. yeah. No, not Ralphie. It was the ki- the other kid with the hat on. The, His little brother. No, the friend. Oh, the flap, uh. the ear flap kid. Ear flap right. kid. Yeah. I'm well, drawing I, a blank I will say, now. It looks like Jack. I, uh, I will say the tongue is like very because it looks like they use a piece of like putty. Mm-hmm. So it just doesn't look right. It looks like, like Laffy Taffy or something. Yeah, well, it's purple, and that doesn't look like a tongue. It looks like a dragon tongue or something. Well, yeah, it's it's acting. They have obviously stuck something to the pole and like. Hello, it ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got man Uggs on, which is mm-hmm. kind of disconcerting. So anyway, I don't know. They look comfy to me. Yeah, the, but the way, like, okay, so he's laced them real loose, so that snow's getting all down mm. in there, like... You are ready. He doesn't, even have, he, yeah. he doesn't even have his pants, his pant cuff over the boot. That's true. And it's snowing enough, like, anybody who lives anywhere where it snowed knows that you don't wear jeans in weather like that, because they would just get soaked right through in, like, 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. This kid's just, yeah, no. He's a sucker. Mm-hmm. Mm, a turd burglar. How we don't play that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving right along in here, uh, we've got the table of contents here, which is slightly less legible than last month's, but not as bad as earlier months. Uh, yeah, it's 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 among the better table of contents as far as legibility and uh, presentation goes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've got a nice piece of art for Donkey Kong Country Two on the left here. Some. Horribly pixelated and discolored screenshots. And uh, then it's got, it shows us the actual console for the N64 up here. Talking about uh, Shoshinkai Out of Control. And this is a preview from the Japanese trade show at Shoshinkai. And then they also talk about Virtual Boy Wario Land. Uh, they have a whole section on the sporting life, which is the sports scene. So full <laughs> coverage coming up in this issue. For Super Nintendo, they talk about uh, Donkey Country 2, Diddy Con- Diddy's Conquest, Warrior Land for Game Boy, Waterworld for Super Nintendo, The Sports Scene, WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game for Super NES, Vegas Stakes for Game Boy, and Mortal Kombat 3 for Game Boy. And they also mention, which were, we didn't play because it wasn't listed as a full coverage game, Mech Warrior 3050 and Urban Strike. And they also have previews of uh, Earthworm Jim and a couple of things. All right, moving on. Player, player's pulse. What's the prompt? They said in volume seventy-five, we asked you to send in your ideas for dream games. <laughs> we didn't expect the tidal wave of responses that came pouring in. Here's a sample. Be Mike's favorite section. Mike, why don't you start us off? <laughs> Noah House from Seaview, Washington says, I think you should come up with a game called Final Fantasy Generations. It would include Final Fantasy one, two, and three, like Super Mario All Stars. I also think you should have Earthbound two. <laughs> wow, that game would take like a God. decade to play through. Kill me. <laughs> Fade <laughs> me, fam. Fade me. Alright. John, take this one. Christian Bray, who I'm sure had frosted tips in Orlando, Florida, <laughs> writes in, Hmm, my dream game. A sequel to Super Mario Kart. You could get cool power-ups like a plunger that you could stick into opponents. Then you can shoot them anywhere you'd like. There would also be power-ups that would make a double of you. Then other players would waste their shells and bananas trying to spin your fake version out. That's not bad. I kind of no. like that. Brian Arpidone from Strongsville, Ohio, mm. <laughs> says, I think the next great Strongville. game, if you can make it, would be Earthbound for the Game Boy. Better yet, how about an Earthbound sequel for the Game Boy? <laughs> Dude, people are hungry for the Earthbound sequel. He, he got that, though. Earthbound 2 came out for the Game Boy Advance, just not in America. Oh, get ready to suck it, Brian. They're coming to America. They did, yeah. make, a, uh, <laughs> they did make a fan translation, so if he was willing to do a little piracy, he could, <laughs> he could know, get it. Do you know in the uh, Neil Diamond jazz singer, they actually kept the blackface scene? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. All right. Mammy. <laughs> All right. 
Cultural appropriation. Ben, you're next. I just did one. Oh. All right. <laughs> Benton W. Ferguson. Boy, I bet he didn't get beat up for that name. Dragon Warrior 4 just... and Run Saber 2 Ugh. for the, for the Super NES. Ugh. All of these games should be made by Nintendo and Rare with graphics like those in Donkey <laughs> Kong Country and Killer Instinct. Ugh. Jesus Christ. I never heard of Run Saber. I don't know. I think this kid runs with scissors. Why would you <laughs> want an RPG, like, with the... Uh. Well, I mean, I guess in your dream world, like, they would have that great graphics, but it'd be over in, like, 30 minutes, because they can only put so much on the cart. Game. No, that's what they did with Super Mario RPG. Right. Yep, but so... Donkey Kong Country graphics? That's the what, same te technology. Uh, all, right. all right, so that no, that's from someone, if, if Bent. Only someone, if only someone had an idea for Mario <laughs> RPG. <laughs> Alright, uh, uh, Matt Krems of St. Louis, Missouri. Loves company. My dream game would be a sequel to Sin City with election every four years or so and more sources of info like a newspaper. Wow, that's so boring. That's your dream game? Ugh, alright. This guy's a city planner now. Yeah. <laughs> I would like I would I would like um, Sim City with a demographic statistics, please. Like, <laughs> how do I get one with traffic control? Uh, is maybe there my, a parking meter game out yet? <laughs> maybe my cousin Mort can come visit me as I'm playing the game. <laughs> That'd be nice. If there can be like an expansion oh. where we can put in roundabouts for you know more traffic. Yeah, that would be good. It'd be it'd be great if we could do they, a census, a census of all the characters in the game. Are you talking about Mort Goldstein or Mort <laughs> Goldberg? Uh, <laughs> Goldstein. Goldberg is a punk. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't even call his mother every week. <laughs> He's a Vashoida. Oh. <laughs> I heard they have goys. <laughs> Extra crispy. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so Cameron Triplett Jr. from Brooksville, Mississippi says, Free Willy and the Monsters. I don't know if this guy's asking for two games mm. or if he's asking no. for the crossover no. nobody no, wanted. Please, this please. guy is a product of incest. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Let's hear from Tony Stocker from Vachon, Washington. I think it would be really cool if you made the Mega Man characters into a fighting game. Hey, Capcom had it. Well, yeah, right. Tony, he, they he did. Got his wish. And it was an arcade game, and it kind of sucked. Hey. <laughs> like that game. Really? Hey, one of yeah. them was good. No. Yeah. My college hey. had it in, no. in like, the arcade that they had. Dude, when I went to the... Union, and people yeah, when, a lot of it. Yeah, when I went to the arcades at the... Uh, at the movies, people were always playing Capcom versus Street Fighter. I'm That's not what I'm talking I'm, about. I'm not talking uh, about Capcom versus Street Fighter. They made an actual Mega Man power battle uh, game or something like that. Play the Capcom one. No, Capcom versus Street Fighter, I, I would get behind for sure. That's the way. All right. I think Chris Berman, he <laughs> back, 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 back. <laughs> Nobody rounds the, rounds the, to, what is it, the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. You right? You got that? You got that? Back, 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 back. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew that reference. He's like, he was on, he was the ESPN anchor for like, 30 years. Oh. I think you should make a Gumby video game. Oh my More. fuck. You should, you can have him do anything in a video game because he's made out of clay. Oh, that's just helpful. Right, because being clay instantly makes him a cartoon character. Chris from, Ro from Rodeo, California. <laughs> or Central America. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> Robin Orlinori from Katy, Texas says... Definitely not from Gale. I would like <laughs> Tank Girl to become a game on the Super NES because the idea of a woman super action hero who's pro-feminist is appealing to many women and men. Why should women keep on taking a backseat to men? Arnold Sly and Jean-Claude get very nauseating after their 10th Macho Man film made into a video game. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? If uh, women can make cheesy action movies, then, you know, make some games out of it. Oh, I hate it. I'm behind that. I hated First that they movie. get to vote, now they want their own <coughs> movies. God damn it. This is what we get. 
This is what we get. As soon as Don't you let them it. vote and drive, they start thinking they're people. <laughs> Make Saudi America grope again. <laughs> <laughs> Saudi Arabia has it right. I'm telling you, just give them the little little mailbox slit to see the world through. That's all you need. <laughs> well, just is- make them look like they're constantly asking everybody for the password. <laughs> half half the people in your country look like walking Daleks. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. What's the next one? Allah story? is great! <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. Mike just had a seizure. Uh, he sounds like that, that PBS lady that teaches uh, knitting on the morning that ha- uh, on Saturday mornings. <laughs> so I was talking about. The one that's had a stroke. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to get you guys to watch this show. She sit there like... She goes to take a sip of water halfway through the show. It like dribbles out the other side of her mouth. It's the best... <laughs> She, the has dr- best. she has cerebral palsy as well? Jesus. It's the best TV you'll ever watch. Oh watch like, with, how, how is this on television? It looks like with, she had a stroke a week ago. Knitting with Parkinson's, <laughs> a.k.a. the hardcore shit. Yeah. No, if she, you can make a sock while, the, while you look like you're constantly enduring a 5.7 earthquake, then you know what? You are a hardcore granny. It's like that... What, what's the... NP, one of the NPR... Host had like throat cancer or something, so she Dick didn't Clark? really talk. On on NPR. Oh, uh, yeah, I know you're talking anyway. about. Um, I know what you're talking about. She's hard to listen to. Yeah, but like they couldn't fire her because like she's well known. But like, oh, all right, yeah, all right, Ben. It'll come What's to me. The, yeah, from Matthew Billado, Youngsville, Louisiana. So uh, let's wait, we skip one. one. Let's get one. Oh. Shannon Callahan from Fresno, California says the X Files have made a great RPG. <laughs> Not would wrong. it though? <sighs> well, okay. It could be. If they it had depends. their own unique story, but not if it was adapted from a TV show. Right, because it's episodic. So it wouldn't really work great. Just I have mean, the one X-Files big episode. Be... Yeah, the X Files. Like movie though, like weren't really that great from what I remember. Yeah, you should probably write. It's just I, it, it would, would be, be really tricky. I think it would work more for like a Telltale Telltale Games format. Like if you did it like true episodic. Oh uh, yeah, where you could like walk around and pick up objects and shit. Well, no, just and this you can really like manipulate the story like because it's released ep- in episodic form, not in. Oh like, yeah, and you could work with feedback and shit. That and you can drastically change the story as you see fit. <laughs> okay, so gentlemen, I, I have be... an awake child. I must attend to. I shall return. Okay. All right. All right. All right, John. I guess you're reading the uh, Matthew Bellabong letter. He goes, oi! I went down to my Chaz Wazzle. <laughs> no, uh, and I found blood, and I found Melinda's, and I found Chaz Wazzles in the Melinda Gundachak. Yeah. And I was all about to chunda in my thunders. Anyway, uh, Matthew Billado from Youngsville, Louisiana, says he wants to see Earthbound 2. This time, Ness is older and can even drive his own car and borrow money from his mom and dad. The arcades, he can play way cool games like Killer Instinct and Primal Rage for 25 cents. He got he lost me now. He can have his own Super NES at home and buy a real Super NES game. So he wants a ga- like a game that lets him play all other games within it. He wants so. Earthbound 2, except it's a commercial for all other Nintendo well, games. Well, and he wants it to play all other games, like, as a functionality built in. Which is kind of the equivalent of, like, wishing for more wishes from the genie. <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy. I like the guy's approach, but obviously for many, many, many practical reasons it wouldn't be possible. It's like, yeah, if I could get, like, one PlayStation 3 game, it would be the PlayStation Now app for the PlayStation <laughs> 4. Yeah, they have... I mean, they let you rent games, like, through the internet now. So that's kind of cool, right? So... Yeah. All right, we got next? amazing. Well, we got Amazing Envelope Art. We got Ranma 1 oh. half. Hmm. Uh, Spidey and Venom. Very, very good. And that's another one from Mississauga. And then we got uh, oh man the Canadians are uh, Canadians are not shying away. We have a Mar- baby Mario on top of what seems to be a very deflated Yoshi, and that's from Francis V from Calgary. And then we got Earthworm Jim with a with a Jordan jersey on. 
blasting a ray gun. So I like this is a weird what happens when worlds collide montage. So this is an excellent mashup we're looking at right here. So mm -hmm. good envelope art. What's the next uh, letter? Aaron Dolores from Bolinas, California says, I would like to see a sequel to Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball with the following changes. More control of pitches, control of slides when base running, trades and player slumps and injuries. But, but keep the graphics, gameplay, game speed, and stadium animation. Fuck, that's a boring sounding sequel. <laughs> Basically wants an improvement to his baseball game. Heather Rogerson, a girl, writes in from Concord, Canada. <laughs> Concord, California. I would truly appreciate if you made a Super NES version of Maniac Mansion, used 3D graphics, cool colors, and a more interesting plot. Hmm. That could have been done. Yeah, but would anybody have bought it? <laughs> uh, All right, and what's then next? John Crone from Munith, Minnesota says, It would be so cool if you could make a Virtual Boy Metroid game. <laughs> You know what? Nobody played Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. I don't think they'd play Metroid 3 for the Virtual Boy. Uh, and we have Su Lin, who has, has to be a lawyer at this point, uh, from Placenta, California. <laughs> I would really like to see a sequel to the game uh, Robotrek. You know what? You're talking my language, even though you probably don't speak it. <laughs> Mickey Kell from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania says, My idea of a dream game would be a sequel or prequel to Super Metroid. It would show how Samus Aran got her armor and her first adventure with it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and in the sociopath letter, we have PJ Klep Klempta from... Midichlorian. Midichlorian, Virginia. Yep, that will go with that. Uh, he writes in, I think the movie Species should be made into a video game. <laughs> For Super NES and shit. Game Boy. <laughs> Holy fuck, PJ. Like, seriously. Oh my fuck. Huh. All uh, right. He, he wants to see them Super NES titties. Yeah. Yeah, he does. All right, take us home. Uh, we, know, we, know, we know which viewers hit puberty. And Timothy S. Is Timothy Succubus. Yep. From Sodas Point, New York. Says, I think the ultimate video game would be a fighting game featuring the characters from Final Fantasy III. That would be darn cool. Yeah, but like scaling up the sprites, I don't know. Kind of works at the size it was at. No, you'd have to have people dressed up as the characters and then like mocap that shit like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and at that point you've lost me. Alright, let's see. Super NES Top 20. At number 5, Super, Metro Super <laughs> Metroid World. Super Mario World. <laughs> 2, Yoshi's Island, uh, Diddy Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, Donkey Kong Country, Chrono Trigger, and Killer Instinct. I really do. I need to play through Chrono Trigger. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that beautiful waterfall scene. Oh, God. It, it's, it's, yeah, I really... I'm, I, I might do that as part of my retirement, now that I don't have to play games every week. <laughs> you, can suggest, you can be a guest on the taste test. Uh, so, hey, no. You're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. What's top? T what's top five for Game Boy, Mike? We got Killer Instinct, Galaga, Galaxian, Tetris, Donkey Kong Land, and top on the charts, Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Let's see. All top right, tell five us sports team stuff. Sports games. They're saying that Madden NFL '96 is number five. NBA Live NHL '96. NBA Jam Tournament Edition, and they put their own Nintendo-produced game, Ken Griffey Jr., MLB Baseball, at number one. And let's see, Mike... Ta Favoritism? What five? are you talking about? What's the top five for Virtual Boy? <laughs> the only five for Virtual Boy. Mm. Red Alarm, Wario Land, Mario Clash, Galactic Pinball, and Mario's Tennis. All right. And then let's see... The Most Wanted... And is whatever. Doom for the new 64, Cruising USA new 64, Mortal Kombat 3 for the new 64, Killer Instinct for the new 64, and then, big surprise, the new 64. So, let's see. And they go into uh, Nintendo 64 preview here. So oh, see. fuck, this is hard to read. Out of control. So it's with, a, the, with the colors, yes. It is the title. Uh, N6, Nintendo 64, Rise of Japan, so they're using the... Yeah. 
I'm sorry. I heard someone say cruising USA. You got excited. <laughs> Did we? <laughs> oh, in the freaking yeah. Okay. Number four most wanted, biatch. <laughs> Malibu's most wanted. All right. Um, what else do they have from Famicom magazine in Japan? They have something in Japanese talking about the Nintendo 64 with Mario mm. pointing out that it's 300 something. I think I could read this. It okay. says, uh, Domo arigato, Mr. Robot. <laughs> it says, <laughs> don't, don't go to Hiroshima. On... <laughs> no. Yeah. So they're featuring L- the controller L- and telling us about what buttons what. Six launches, buttons. L- launches with train molester. <laughs> what? Train, molest- train molester mode? <laughs> All right. The ben, Japanese if you don't understand version. about the train molesting thing, you need to understand a little bit about Japanese culture. Very good. They're they fucking like, weird. They grope on trains. It's really gross. Oh, it's okay. nasty. Like, you can basically corner a girl and just, like, go to town. Yeah. It, basically, it's like a Trump paradise. I don't oh, know why okay. he, he, like, ever left when he went. But, all right. <laughs> Probably because he would uh, never go on a subway. Yeah. Germs, ew. But pussy to grab. Hey. Uh, so here's the thing, Mike. I know you like already besmirched the name of this fine controller earlier. I agree. Not the name of the controller; it's the look of the, the controller. I said this fine <laughs> controller. Um, <laughs> anyways, yes, that totally proves you're right. Anyways, uh, I agree that it is totally awkward with these three prongs coming out of it, like it's some kind of fork or trident upside down. Uh, it is. I think an attempt they were trying to get ergonomic, yep. and uh, you know it, it. It you really only hold it by the middle uh, prong and the right prong, or, or if you're left-handed, I guess the opposite. But you still and, don't forget, and don't no, forget, and don't forget that, that trigger suck. they put up. Don't forget the the trigger under it. Ugh. Yeah, the you had the trigger. trigger. I don't mind that. Yeah, they could have just made an extra shoulder button. Why? Why? They already have two shoulder buttons. No, it's awesome for. Oh. For, uh, the one, the one thing that did suck, yeah, that that left shoulder button is damn near um, like impossible. Though. Yeah, that's worthless, worthless. Because your hand isn't anywhere near it, so you had to like shift your right hand all the way over to the left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you have to move your hand around the controller. That's the first indication you done fucked up. Well, I mean, here's the thing that they brought to the game, though, that was new, is this analog stick. They were the first ones to bring the analog stick to a standard controller. Uh, are we sure about that? Didn't we see some Nintendo controller that uh, was a prototype in an earlier issue? Yeah, prototype and I told you, matter. Don't care prototype. about prototypes. Well, they were, they were for sale, Challenge okay? Me. They weren't experimental. They were the, these were the guys that made this a thing. They made the analog stick a thing. They are responsible for bringing this to the masses. Everybody else started copying them with the analog stick. All of a sudden, PlayStation's like, oh, we got to get this uh, dual shock thing out. Yeah, let's do that. Let's add two sticks. Mm, twice the power. Oh, but we got, yeah, but we got to do it, but better. And put them in reasonable there positions. There was a company in Japan that made a computer one in 1989, but this... Didn't really popularize it. Yeah. Right, this was the first... Um, like mass mainstream, yeah. yes. This really made this thing to market. It made the analog stick a thing, just like the D. They made the D pad take off. Now they're doing it again with the with the uh, joystick controller, the analog stick. I like I like how they say slick new Euro design for the controller ports. <laughs> Euro. <laughs> That's All weird. Right. Um. Mm. I do have to say, <clears throat> oh, what's the X? This is funny. The Xbox version, like, so of the era of wired controllers, Xbox definitely did it right with the breakaway. Because mm-hmm. if anybody walked past it, it didn't like yank the whole console across the room. Yes, <laughs> that's true. They did it nice. But now everything is. I mean, I mean, I guess you get wired controllers if you get one for your PC or whatever. But who yeah. else? Nobody else has the wired controllers for anything. The poor's. Yeah. So, and people aren't selling to those people anyway. Let's let's move on to the next page here. I want to talk about the console itself. So here's what's funny: is they so they have branded this thing the Nintendo Ultra 64 for the Western market, and yet it says Jap- Japan's new logo, and that's the N64 logo we all know and love. Right. 
and it has this, the same branding that we're used to in the states, but it's calling it the Japan version on the on the console. But I mean, here's another another advancement that they did: four players, standard out of the gate. You have yeah. the four player control. I mean, controls right out of the gate. You didn't no have to buy a multi system, tap. Yeah. No other system had this. And this is like a st- like a standard. Like everybody has this now, right? Yeah, I mean, think about it. So, <coughs> well, no, not really. I mean, the Xbox just... did. Right, Dreamcast did. I'm just saying, like, but the well, PlayStation did. You're right. PS PlayStation didn't. You're right. They were like, meh. Well, and then all the modern ones, it doesn't. There's no limitation. I mean, I right. guess there. I well, actually, there probably is. I've never really tested it. Like, how many people at once you can. It's and there's the got to be only so many places you can break up the screen. I think yeah. four was the limit. If they went to well, eight, then everyone would be screwed. Well, right, went, but I meant like a limit to just how many how many wireless controllers can be connected. At one it's time. four. Um, Rock Band is the one that pushes that limitation oh, to like right. five, kind of. But you can really only well, have like four controllers. That's funny. You never really even think about that. Like how much networked gameplay. Like no, everybody has their own console now. Nobody goes to someone's place to. Yeah, local play multiplayer. Games. Yeah. Yeah, that's always been Nintendo's thing. Has been the local local multiplayer, as opposed to the online uh, multiplayer. So this is this is their jam. Giving you. Yeah, uh, it was made for like families that want to play together, or people you know that actually have friends that visit them. Mm-hmm. So okay, they're just telling you about a, l- a little insight into my life. <laughs> Rest of the article is telling you about the system, the 3D graphics is telling you about Shishinkai, the show itself. Um, so not a ton of details aside from just telling you what you're looking at, which you already know. It's the controller and then the console. So that's kind of it. It says, be released in North America in April 1996, which I think they delayed until, what, August, September? Uh, I'll look so. for you. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next game in the meantime. Diddy's Kong Quest, Donkey Kong Country 2. Mike, take it away. I played this game. I enjoyed it. Good play control, excellent graphics, stunning music. It's just it was, an amazing uh, game. It Septem- was September 96. Aha, that's right. They made the holiday window, though. Right. And it says that this has Rare squeezed about 50% more game into the sequel than was the original. But don't think anything was sacrificed in return. I uh, beat, played this game almost to the end of the first level, because each one is a bunch of different missions. And I would keep playing it. It's very good. You didn't play this game growing up? Um, I played the first one. I'm not sure if I played the oh. second one or not. This is a great date game, I will say, because <laughs> so many girls played this game growing up. So you just hmm. pop this in, they can play really? it, like, you get drunk while you're playing it. I've done it on multiple dates. Really? Hey, game. girl. Yes. Wow. You get to play a girl in a video game, and she's no, not wearing not skimpy why. clothing. God. No. I've not. never played this game. What? You tell you want you to you mm-hmm. do a donkey style? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, guess what else is curved? Like that banana. All right, um, but yeah, no, like, no, this is... Hey, girl, how about I carry you on my back, but instead you're facing the other way? I'm just saying, I've played this game, like, with when girls been like, oh, come on, have video game night. Like, I've played this game multiple times. <laughs> That's like, funny. Yeah. Why it, is this people, the game that they know? It's funny. I don't know, but, like, it's easy to play. Like, a lot of people play it growing up. Uh, and, it's, and it's a great game to play drunk, because the controls are pretty... Tight, so like mm-hmm. you just say, "Hey, girl, I'll carry you on my shoulders," but you know, how about facing the other way? That should be like, "Well, what is that going to mean?" And then you'll just be like, "Hello." No fucking creep. Just enjoy a video game. Joke wasn't funny the first time. Even less funny the second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Diddy's helpers. We got Glimmer the Lantern Fish, <laughs> Clappy the Seal, Rattly the Snake, and Squitter the Spider. I Clappy can't the Chlamydia. You tried to do that shit joke again, but it didn't land the first time. Take that and rewind it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, tell me about the, the Kong clan. We've got Wrinkly Kong, which is Cranky's wife. 
and she'll give you uh, tips. And Cranky Kong will share his vast store of knowledge, which is somehow different than a tip. And then <laughs> there's rocking two uh, canes now. <laughs> so just the yeah. one. Yeah, why not just why not just go all and get a walker? <laughs> and then we got Swanky Kong, which is like the pimp, which is like the pimp gorilla, and it's basically like a trivia show. Hmm. You wager some coins, and he'll give you. Yeah, he's basically. Coins. Um, oh god, what's the name of that? Like pick the behind door number. There's like a whole. It looks thing. like Gary <laughs> Monty Glitter. Hall. Yeah, Monty Hall, the Monty Hall dilemma, oh. where you always you always want to pick the to have them open the door for you. He looks like Gary Glitter to me. Yeah. <laughs> Minus the, uh, my, I mean, like when you get kicked Including out of Cambodia the, uh, for pedophilia, yeah. you are out of fucking control. <laughs> <laughs> when Cambodia says, "Wait a second, you're not yeah. treating people right," kind of sober you up. have fucked up. <laughs> when uh, Cambodia is like, "Whoa, now you need to slow down." <laughs> Slow your roll, slow your roll, Guilo. Oh my god! And then we got Funky Kong, which is just like a totally tubular dude giving up the peace sign. And what happened to Candy will... Kong? They ditch him, ditcher. Candy isn't. Uh... Oh yeah, I guess that would be. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, I guess they just like they shrank her and they named her Dixie. Well, they really got rid of Candy Kong, huh? And then we got Clubba, who, uh, if you pay 15 Krem coins, he'll let you cross his bridge. He won't say where the path leads, but if you rake in enough cash, you'll find out for yourself. Hmm. All right, so his helpers were again. All right, because you were too busy laughing at me. Yes. Glimmer the lantern fish. Then we got Clap the se- then we got Clappy the seal. <laughs> then we got Rattly the snake, and then Squitter the spider, who... <laughs> He's got like four pairs of chucks. And your uh, mother's a squitter. Squitter can defeat enemies with his webs and he can reach high places by spinning platforms out of them. Mm. Very good. And then we get to see all of Diddy's cool new stuff. And I guess uh, we see Donkey Kong himself stuck in a cage. Yeah, he's the one that gets captured at the beginning of the story, right? And that's why Diddy's trying to rescue him. I didn't see a cutscene with that, but mm. maybe I pressed the wrong buttons. That I haven't, like, I haven't played the game, but that's the story that they gave us leading into this coverage. Uh, is Donkey Kong a different species of gorilla? Because he's got two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe just. But, maybe, iron- I but ironically, <laughs> once one eyebrow. You as you mature, you yeah. your eyes separate. Your eyes- the eyes separate with age. <laughs> it's mitosis. It's the equivalent of your balls dropping. <laughs> ocular, ocular mitosis, the process just, of cell division. Well, you that's can just see science. That's just yeah. Look how low Cranky Kong's droop. Right. We're talking about his eyes, right? Yeah. <laughs> God, when I, when I tell you that's about, what that's what the beard is for, so that you don't see his his pendulous, wrinkly sack. Oh, by the I way, is there anything worse about getting older than having your sack hit the water? Ah. Oh. Oh, when, down when, well, no, I'll tell you when you worse. when you sit down for the first time and so, you sit on them. Yeah, so I was <laughs> volunteering at the senior center across from the first apartment I when I moved out in uh, in Scottsdale. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a senior center across the street, so I was like, "All right, you know, I'm, I'm going to go over there once a week and see what I can do." And they're like, "Oh, we have this. Get some uh, old, get some, get some crusty punani. No fucking creep. Gum job." <laughs> Um, no, actually, old people like love to. If you're there all the time, they like tell you stories and shit and try to give you nickels. It's fun. <laughs> but no, like, so like they have this library. They have this library. <laughs> there was like an auto library, and they needed help, like just organizing it, keeping it, you know, from getting out of hand and all that. So I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll come in once a week and help out with that. And so I'm in there one day. And I look over, this lady comes in. I'd never seen her there before, but she, like, had her dad with her. And I, so I took in that they were, like, kind of going on a tour of the place because they want to check out if there's somewhere he'd come visit. And he sits down in the, in the chair, uh, and he's, like, starting to fall asleep. And he's, like, wearing shorts, and the nutsack just, like, 
falls out. Like, <laughs> from, like, from in his shorts. Like, and these were not high-cut shorts. Like, he was wearing, like, regular shorts. His nuts were just, like, rolling out of his oh. leg. Like, like, they were... It was, like, a good two feet of nutsack. Like, oh. I've... Like, and I'm, like, trying to, like... <clears throat> like, 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 let his daughter know. Like, uh, yo, like... <laughs> sure it wasn't... Nut- Sure wasn't Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> He's like, <"Yeah." laughs> well, the sad thing was I didn't notice it until like there was a lady that I was helping with the computer who like was like, uh, she was trying to like direct my eyes towards it without telling me. <laughs> oh, no. <nope. laughs> <I'm like>, oh. <laughs> so yeah, this yeah I saw way too much old man nutsack than I ever wanted. So yeah, I guess it gets like, progressively worse as we get older. So look forward to that one, son. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, at that point, you need, like, a bra for your sack. <laughs> a man's ear. <laughs> All right. All right, where were we, Mike? Got a whole bunch of barrels here. Yeah, we got character barrels that uh, they can only be triggered by the character that's on them. I never got to those barrels. I only hit the barrels that uh, released a partner whenever I lost one. Yeah, so... God damn, really? Okay, yeah. That's how you get, like, the special characters, is you just smash a barrel that looks like, you know, the sidekick animal. It's just the same as the first game, pretty much. Okay. Ooh. That sounded like a little bit yeah, of Yeah, that sounded like you followed through a little bit on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Some substance there. <laughs> All right. So the rest of this is level coverage, um, which is pretty pretty standard. They don't even show, like, uh, maps of the whole thing. They're just kind of showing no. you bits and pieces of You don't really need... Worlds. Actually, that's not true, because the hidden levels are hard to find. But this the, game is fun. It's it's worth your time. Like, I would say it's in the top ten of Nintendo Power... Or Nintendo... Super Nintendo uh, games. And also, if you're looking for a date night game, I will highly recommend it, because it's pick up and play easy. So... Can we talk about what's happening at the top of page 21 on the right? Ooh, yep. Uh, is that a man or a woman? That is a man. <laughs> are we sure about this? Because those, yes. those titties and nipples are huge. Those are some nice man tits. <laughs> they had some moves in the game. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see if there's anything else to this. Mike, did you have any final thoughts for the game? Yeah, play it. It's good. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and move on here. There's tons of coverage. In, in Wait, hold on. On page 22, it seems that Dixie somehow got, like, a triple ponytail situation going on. It's because her attack is, like, swinging her hair around, so they're trying to show the animation of that. In a terrible way, yes. Eat that, Willow Smith. <laughs> oh, I watched that fucking Bright movie. Oh, uh, don't tell me about it. I'm only, like, 30 minutes in. <sighs> All right. It's not... I'm not going to ruin anything. It's... It's worth a watch, I guess. But. I'm hearing a lot of shit on it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I have it downloaded to my phone. <laughs> I'm not going to watch, like, 20 minutes during my lunchtime, so... Okay, all right. During, during your poop. I'll talk, you. I'll talk with you in the future about it. There you go. Fairy lives matter. Yep. <laughs> it's not one of these things where I'm, like, setting up a whole movie night for, for but I am invested at this point. All right. I, I was doing that with um, episodes of Master of None because I like ran out of data, so I was like pre-downloading Master of None to watch oh, <laughs> at yeah. lunch. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Right on. All right, let's move on to the next section, which is a preview for Earthworm Jim Two. I don't know why. Pink says, Power. I don't know why it says Pink Power under it. I know that's that's like that's like one of my first porn searches. <laughs> They have a nice couple of nice photos here of creator Doug Tenapel posing with the various Earthworm Gem pieces and giving an eyebrow. He does have that weird beard goatee combo of like he's got he's a con- yeah Tony he, Stark he looks like he could, yeah, yeah. He, where he could like kind of play the devil. Mm-hmm. Well, if right, the devil, he, if the devil was like a game developer, the mustache goes down to the goatee, and he also has like the center goatee mm. strip, like a light so, Frank Zappa. Right. He's kind of pulling it off, though. He needs a he needs a better haircut. It would look a lot better. And then we have what appears to be like Why a salamander. Why does it hurt when I pee? It <laughs> jumped right up and grabbed my meat. 
I got it from me toilet seat. I was never talking about the time I was saying that like really loud at work. I didn't realize that <laughs> a patient could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Did they say anything? Yeah, they like they like ran back like don't you can't sing that that loud. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I was like, if I'm going to sing Zappa, I'm going to sing Zappa at the top of my lungs. There you go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, All right. so we got a salamander doing an axolotl impression. Saying, hooray, Nintendo Power is groovy while closing his eyes and trying to fly. Makes sense. There's a slug on a unicycle. It's like, you know why they don't like That's salamander? a maggot. You know why they don't it's like salamanders in the hood? Why? Because they ask a lot of questions. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this then we got uh, yeah the salamander shooting down with his with a ray gun on his foot. And, I like uh, the whatever evil dude putting salt on the snail. That's pretty cool. Where are you seeing this? Page thirty three. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah. cat. Evil the cat. I think it's just called Evil the cat. Hmm. This is one of his evil things, apparently. <laughs> and then right. we got like this. We got a snot that basically is an impression of guile. Mm. What what is up with the ham steak? Uh, yelling and shoot another one shooting fire. I think he's like breathing in so that he could exhale fire. Mm. Interesting. Because he's highly peppered, I imagine. That's what those black balls are. Unless he's being served with rabbit shit. <laughs> I don't know Black how berries? you eat your steaks. I don't know. <laughs> I always get a side of rabbit shit with my steak. Alright, mm. uh, Killer Instinct tournament coverage, is that what we have here? Or is yeah. it coming up? It's, you know, it's, this is uh, right here, and it's telling you about how um, you can enter into this contest. So it's got a couple of special offers. I don't know if you guys have this in your scans. I've got a coupon here for saving $10 when you purchase one Super NES Killer Instinct game pack mm -hmm. with the Killer Cuts music CD included inside. Mm -hmm. And it says there's a special offer if you buy Super NES for, I mean, Killer Instinct. Uh, you pay $3, send in this coupon, and you could have a Killer Instinct hat of your very own. Wow. And there's yeah. also a tournament here. So in the first 500 entries in the Killer Instinct Stamps for Champs tournament automatically win power speed. You can also win one of the 50 grand prizes, a full, a killer full gore mask with which to fool your foolish foes. A lot of alliteration there. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take a photograph of your victory against Idol, check out the rules below, and send us your entry. So, yeah. Alright, next game for Virtual Boy is Wario Land. Wow, 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 wow. So, this is actually a sequel to the first Wario Land, which was Ooh. Super Mario Land 3. Wario Land? Yep. And um, what's interesting about this is that this has never been re released on any other platform. This has not been remade on any other platform. Huh. It's not a port of the original one, like I said. So this is sort of like a lost classic uh, in terms of uh, Mario slash Wario games. It's hmm. the same gameplay as the first one was for Game Boy. Uh, so you wear different hats, you get different powers. Uh, it has the 3D effect in terms of the background <laughs> moving. and It looks really cool. I remember this game. It's got like one kind of move, and you can see it in the bottom, of pa bottom right of page 37 where there's these little platforms that will allow you to jump to a different uh, yeah. depth. It like catapults game. you to the back yeah. back aspect of the screen. So it adds a little bit of dimension, but that's basically the only thing they do with it, aside right. from effects. You know, they have like, uh, you know, things swinging where you have to avoid, you know, the go It just looks cool. It's one of the cool, it's, it's what it struck <clears> me as the, as the best looking of the Virtual Boy games. Yeah, this is definitely, like, <clears throat> the most polished, like, full game for Virtual Boy. Some of them are just, like, you know, tech demos at best, and this right. one was actually, like, a full game. 
Man, these pictures are really confusing. Okay. We see we see Wario with all these hats on, and he's got these wicked sideburns. As soon as we see him without the hat, he is fucking bald except for like a spiked mohawk brush cut thing. Hmm. Where are you so, seeing that? Uh, page thirty-eight. Let me see here. So yeah, the sideburn has to be attached to the hat. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, all of his hats hat. come with sideburns. <laughs> yep. Your hats don't. It's like those Jewish uh. hats, right? <laughs> <laughs> they come with the cyber name brand. I was oh, you mean the Jimmy Curl? I was thinking of opening up a new business called Back Alley Briss, everything half off. <laughs> <laughs> what gets me is these uh, another startling picture. When we see the picture of the uh, the map, it's all white and purple, which is very informative. White and purple, white and purple. Yeah, I don't know if they, like, drew that, or they did an inverse color and decided that would be cheaper to print, or what. I don't know what... Maybe, like, rendering... Like, because if you tried to render a map it, with a black background and red, it would be hard to read. Yeah. Definitely. So, I guess if you, do an, if you do an inverse map, it's easier to read, would be my guess, is what they did here. Yeah. Wow, well, when the guess. photo negative is, is more legible than the actual image... <laughs> You've already yeah, stumbled on the problem. Yeah, because all the game Like, if, if, if it was a map look like that, it'd be very hard to tell. I think it actually is easier <coughs> to make everything out in the uh, in the fo- in the negative. Yeah, it's just how it works on print. But it, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're watching it, it doesn't. It looks pretty good. Yeah, playing it, it's fine. It's just mm-hmm. like in this format, trying to read a map. I think they made the right call. It's a fun game. Uh, it's if you liked Warrior Land One, you'll like this game, and it's it's kind of a hidden classic. So it's <clears throat> it's really good. It, the problem is, like Ben was saying, though, is it's really hard to play. You have to go through all these steps. To yeah, get your... it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> can you only play it on like a, a Google Cardboard thing, or can you, or uh, like, the are you able v- to play it on a uh, monitor? You the can... Gear VR. You can play it, it just won't look as 3D. Yeah, you can play it in a 2D emulator, um, but you just won't have the 3D effect. Hmm. So I have a 3D TV, so... It'll just use, like, nope. one eyeball nope. of the two. Nope, it's not... <laughs> it won't work that it's way. Not, it won't work on a 3D TV, huh? No. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe if you had the, gla- the special glasses or something. But I'm going to bet setting that up is going to be a pain, the pain in the ass. pain in the ass to set that up, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Yeah, if you want to play it, either go the Google Cardboard route or buy a Virtual Boy. Uh, or just keep praying that Nintendo will actually release this on some platform. They had a perfect opportunity with a 3DS and they didn't do it then. So I have no hope that this will ever be released released again. Because oh, why the bother? Look on page 42, look what Wario says. What's that? On the bottom left. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. Yeah. So what's interesting is they followed this game up on the Game Boy, or, uh, yeah, with um, Warrior Land 2. So it goes Warrior Land, Virtual Boy Warrior Land, the Warrior Land 2. So for hmm. many players, they probably think that this game doesn't exist. Hmm. Or that it's a port, is my guess. Speak, speaking of games that people didn't know existed, Waterworld for Super Nintendo. Oh, boy. Um, why would you say people wouldn't know it exists? Well, it was never released in America, oh. <laughs> despite all this coverage. It was only <laughs> released on the PAL markets of <laughs> Asia. So none of us would ever have played this game, uh, but obviously with modern emulators and uh, everything else, you can check it out. Man, the, what a what a variety of stages, just from yeah, the first three pictures. Yeah, the coverage is awesome. Like, it makes this game look playable. <laughs> um, so, it's a, like, Ocean made it. It's, a, it's you know... hi uh, Yeah. An Ocean game <sighs> by Waterworld. <laughs> um, Waterworld Queen! So, the, you, the first stage is, it's, it plays out where you're on your raft. You have to shoot all the jet skis and other, you know, enemies and stuff that are on the ocean. With you, uh, plays a lot. <laughs> just like the Virtual Boy, you are not here to save anybody. <laughs> it, yeah, it, I don't remember uh, guns being on the front of the jet skis. It plays like um, asteroids, really. 
Like just instead of in space, it's, you're on the ocean, but same diff. And uh, then you go to a mode where you dive down. Uh, like you can sort of see it uh, in the middle of the page on 46, where. But the whole point I thought was that he had gills in the movie, but you, but you have like an, an energy meter instead to keep because you'll drown even though you have gills. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the controls are fucking awful. Um, and one, but like once you play through the bonus mode and then you like clear more, um, of the ocean, it like you basically go to what they call an atoll and it's basically just like a base that you have to then fight your way through side scrolling action wise where you're start off with a knife and all you can do is slash people. But when you're crouching, you can't slash. So you have to oh. slash yeah, it and and your attack radius is l- like literally uh, a foot from your chest. So good luck killing anyone. Let me guess: if you walk into somebody, you get hurt. Yep. Ugh. Yep. Yep. It just and the controls are awful. Like you have to basically jump to like the exact pixel you need to to climb up a ladder. If you're jumping to it, it's just and even though you're above water because the fucking floating island if you if you fall into the black area like if you fall off a platform like you die you don't just like land in the water and like start over no like <laughs> ah, great this, logic this game this game very frustrating uh i'm actually kind of glad it was never released in america <laughs> <laughs> nice all right uh, so how, how much shirtless dennis hopper is in this game I've given you more playthrough than you've given in any game, and you ask me about... (laughs) Dennis Hopper almost drowned in the filming of this movie, (laughs) because that jacket he's wearing was, like, so heavy. It was, like, 75 pounds or something. And, like, he made a misstep (laughs) on one of the boats they were on and, like, just sank. And, like, (laughs) they had divers on set, you know, ready for this kind of thing, so they had to go down and save him. And he was, like, coughing up water and shit. <laughs> but, yeah, he almost, like, drowned wearing It's that kind of remarkable outfit. that a- more actors don't die when you think about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> and yet, Adam Sandler keeps churning out all those movies. Mm. Every glorious turd. <laughs> all right. The centerfold poster here is glorious artwork from Doug to Naple for Earthworm Jim 2. Coming soon to your Super NES from Playmates. Could have been a centerfold. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty good. My the, earthworm is a centerfold. Earthworm the is a centerfold. The blob on his back reminds me of the blob from tr- that treasure... Was it Treasure Planet? Oh, that's yeah. not a blob. That's not. Oh. And then it's got Psychro. Mike left. knows what I'm talking about, though. The, yeah, it's like one of those Don Bluth films like Fern Gully or... Uh, Earth after. <laughs> oh, after Earth? Yeah. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Meant the same damn thought. <laughs> All right, boys, should we call in the middle, or you want to keep going for more? Uh, let's finish. Let's stick a fork in it. All right. Let's go ahead and call it. Uh, so we're going to take a break here, everybody. We're going to come back to you for part two uh, in, a, in a second uh, half here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you'd like to find more about the show, you can go to our website, planetpowerpodcast.com, and you'll find links to our Facebook page there, uh, Twitter account that we operate, um, iTunes, if you would leave us a review and give us a rating, we'd appreciate it. And if you'd like to support the show by helping us pay for hosting, uh, we'd appreciate that too. Uh, you can just go to patreon.com slash power for that one. Uh, Mike, what do you got? I got the the Graveyard Shift Horror with Sheldon and Mike. We're starting off a new year. We're kicking it. We're doing it awesome. We are... We've done... uh, Shit, I'm trying to remember the movie we did last week. Oh, yeah. We kicked off the new year with an Arctic Isolation-themed movie. The Thing from Another World. Wait. The the original John Carpenter, The Thing? Or is there another Thing? No. This was the movie that inspired John Carpenter. John Carpenter made a remake. This was the original. Oh, The Thing's a remake? Yeah, it was an original 1951 black and white movie, The Thing from Another World. Hmm. Huh. 
I would just watch the 80s version. But all right. Yeah, this one was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, it was the uh, it, it was done a little bit differently because the idea of an enemy that looks like anybody that right looks like anyone around you it must have been like a little too close to communism for them. <laughs> so they're just like fuck that. He, he's he's a he's a space carrot. My favorite <laughs> like the thing factoid is um, so there's that McMurdo base that's at the South Pole. Like it's kind of loose. The movie's like loosely set there, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it like that actual base, like it's cut off from you know the outside world for the uh, Antarctic winter. So like when the last plane leaves that night, like the staff all watch the thing together. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I was like, oh, that's fucking brilliant. That is a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. The other the other fun thing I've learned about that is apparently they have to give them like an industrial supply of condoms because they just spend the entire winter fucking each other. But <laughs> really, wow. Oh yeah, like they go through it like crazy. That's like Fort McMaster or something that or something, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Mc- McMurdo. I McMurdo. Think is what it's called. Yeah. But yeah, I bet they just like. So where the, where are they taking applications? The, uh, <laughs> I'm guessing like the condom pile like just feeds a colony of penguins or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> we thirst for jizz. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> thanks everybody for listening. Well, they walk around in their own shit anyway. So I'm Ben. <laughs> I'm disgusted, and I'm John. And now you're playing the pal. Entertainment system. Now you're playing.